Now that I've got my workshop cleaned up, I immediately want to mess it up, but not too much. I got an idea that I've had for quite a long time and I wanted to try it out. And what it involves is this piece of maple, big maple dowel that I made on the lathe last year. I've got that and I've also got this wire here. So the basic idea is to wind the wire around this dowel so that it winds up being the threads for a screw. So I came up with a kind of an interesting way to do that and to make it so that they're evenly spaced. And the first step is to get it put in the vise here just to hold it steady. I'm going to use my, you know, my wooden utility knife here and cut open the wire and get it out of the package. And then I'm going to try to divide it in two. Stick that in there and do as tight a bend around it as I can. Like that. And now the idea and it is just an idea because I haven't actually done it, is to bend this wire around the dowel, keeping it as tight together as I possibly can and as tight to the dowel as I possibly can. I knew I said I was going to stop after six inches, but you know, longer is better, right? You know, you know, on a nice long one, I've got nine inches almost already. So I might as well use up the last little bit and get to 10 or maybe 10 and a half. What I want to do now is I want to clamp the end of the wire on and I want to try to pack this on as tight as I possibly can to get it all straightened out. Then I'm going to find the center of it roughly and I'm going to cut it there and then I'm going to do the unthinkable and I'm going to wind that back in again but this time it'll be easier because it's already pre-wound. Part of the way in I got to thinking that maybe the better way to do this for this size dowel is to go with a smaller dowel to begin with and then you know when you do get that spring back that's gonna happen you can compensate for that by you know winding it on a smaller dowel then once the springs back it fits on it tightly on the bigger dowel. Okay I've got this uncoiled on over the other one I'm just gonna take the end and then I'm gonna bend this over and get it in that hole that I drilled. Just gonna get that driven in. Okay, so that's that first one. Now comes the hard part and that's gonna be on doing this again and then I can't let it go fully because then I'll this will all mix up and make a big mess and I'm just gonna undo it and try to ease it out if I don't lose a finger here that's good because it's catching again and then just coil this one in between the other two and you know what that's going to be impossible this is going to be impossible to do it would have been so much easier to do it the other way to begin with because this is just not going to work. Yeah, I'm going to knock it off for tonight and try to finish it tomorrow. Well, that's the next day and I gave up on the idea of trying to wind this back in around. What I've done is I've taken the other uh, half of the, the original spool and started to wind that in between to get the spacing. And that should go a lot smoother. It'll take about the same amount of time as it took to do this. But you know what? All uh, when you when you put things in perspective, it's not really that long. It would take once you know what you're doing, which I really don't know what I'm doing yet. It would take very little time, you know, a couple hours to get something like this done, and then you could let the epoxy that's going to hold it in place set overnight. Next day, you've got a a big lead screw for a vise. Okay, the one I just wrapped on is nice and tight. I just need to tighten up the other one. I'll do that starting at the end and twisting it and kind of pulling back too to compact them together. I'm uncoiling the original one now. The only problem I've got is that the second one that I wound in is not as tight as I could hope, but 
the spacing is not that bad. I mean, it could use a little bit of adjustment, but I think it's workable. I hope you're not expecting a success with everything I do on this uh, channel, because that won't be the case. I'm going to try to show the things that I, you know, I try out, whether they work or not. It can be helpful for some people that are interested in doing this kind of thing, just to know how much, you know, work it is to figure out if something's going to work. Yeah, I think I would have been a lot better off if I had of made a smaller dowel, right? See, this dowel, I think, is an inch and a half. Yeah, it's an inch and a half diameter dowel. If I had made, like, a one-inch dowel, possibly, or one and a quarter, I'd have to try it out. I'd do a few turns around it or something, and then slip it onto this bigger dowel and see if it's nice and tight. That would be the way to do it. Now, that's not to say that I've given up on this. I have, and it's just not working exactly the way that I envisioned it would. So I got people um, making comments on some of my videos saying that, well, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? Well, chances are I tried it that way, and, and it didn't work out as, as, um, as well as it should have. Uh, there's a lot of trial and error in this kind of thing. So as you can see, it kind of resembles a thread, but like I say, it's not tight enough. If it, the spacing could be made fairly well, then I would go ahead and I would, you know, brush epoxy onto it so that it would glue it onto the thing. But I really need to tighten this up a lot more before I could, you know, adjust the spacing. So be nice to have a good way to tighten it up, some sort of, uh, you know, turnbuckle or something on the end there that pulls on the wire to pull it in tight. Right now I'm trying to grab it with the pliers and I've you know, screwed that up. I get it with the pliers and then... Okay, I'm gonna set it aside for now. I've got, you know, a nice uh, slinky type thing here. I've got another one here to work with. I considered taking this piece of PVC and putting it in the vise and then trying to wrap it around this a bit tighter but I think that this one inch outside diameter here is a bit too small I'd like to try with one and a quarter and I don't have anything I don't have anything on hand that's one and a quarter so what I'll do is I'll either make it one and a quarter inch dowel or I'll try to find a pipe maybe out my shed that's one and a quarter inches on the outside and try that to you know tr actually see if this is gonna work I think it will, it just takes the, you know, the right method. That's what half of this is, figuring out the correct way to do it. I'm going to end this video right now on that, and then we'll see you next time. Okay, I'm not one to give up too quickly, and so I tried this. I went in and I got the sump pump, the old sump pump thing that I had. The pipe on this is actually one and a half. The dowel, as it turns out, is actually one and five eight so I made up this block here that captures the wire and helps me wrap it around this tight so I'm just gonna try this now and see if that makes a difference what I've done is I've cut the end off straight and then I sharpened it a little bit you know took it to the uh, I didn't need to because it's still too slack I think that a one and a quarter inch pipe using the method that I just did with the block wherever it is wherever it is. No, I think that a one and a quarter inch pipe using a block like this. And so I think that a one and a quarter inch pipe or dowel wound around using this block again will get me in the ballpark anyway. So I think that a one and a quarter inch dowel with this wound around it with something like this again will get it as tight as I need it to be on this bigger dowel. But at this point I got I am but at this time, but at this time, I'm actually going to stop this video.
But at this time, I'm actually going to stop this video and we'll save that for another one where I actually have a put. Ow, I bit my tongue. Oh. But at this point, I'm actually going to stop the video and we'll save this for another time where I'll actually finish the rod itself, the screw, you could say, and then explore ideas on how to make a nut that would fit right on there too. Using the same method, it would just take this basically and slip it into, you know, a bigger hole like that and glue it in type thing. And then that would be the nut. So easy once you know how to do it, I guess, but it's getting there, like I said. See you next time. I couldn't leave well enough alone I had to come out here and try this so I quickly turned this dowel and tried to wind it just like I did the other one but the problem is I think that the coil is too big now I really should have started winding it onto the dowel this size to begin with so it's kind of bunching up there and going all crazy so I don't think it's gonna work I'm gonna have to scrap the project for now and retry again later yes I know I said two times before that was the end of the video, but this actually is.